Welcome to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers, and today we are studying the science books with a look at the high tech in foods. And we're starting at NASA headquarters. Who is cooking for our astronauts, and what flies when you're talking about food in space? Well, it's time to check in with Houston and find out. They're not astronauts, but this crew has the right stuff. They're dietitians and food scientists at NASA's Food Systems Engineering Facility at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Early on in the space race of the 1960s, scientists weren't even sure humans could swallow in zero gravity. Once they found out they could, the earliest dishes probably made them not want to. Many of the first foods were cube foods, like you see here. And these were dried products that were formed into cubes and coated with an edible film. Initially, the food system required no utensils. They were basically either squeezing it into their mouths or putting it into their mouth by hand. Today, food for the Space Shuttle and International Space Station first goes through a series of blind taste tests, where it's rated on a number of attributes, including appearance and flavor. If it's tasty enough, it's added to the list of 180 different foods and beverages the astronauts choose from. We involve the crew members in their menu selection, and we find that it's very important to do that because food has such a psychological importance to the crew members, especially on a long-duration space flight. Then, as much as a year before a scheduled launch, crew members come in for a food evaluation session. It's an opportunity to taste test a variety of dishes and rate them from one to nine. Anything rating higher than a six could end up in space. We tell them, if you don't want to see this in your menu, you better score it below a six. Then, several months before the mission, dietitians begin preparing the food. Surprisingly, many dishes are consumer products, like this frozen teriyaki vegetable mix. It cooks in a steam jacketed kettle, then weighs out into portion controlled containers. But there's no refrigerator or freezer on the space shuttle, so food must be made shelf stable. For our standard menu items, for shuttle we need at least a six month shelf life on the products. That usually requires freeze drying the prepared food. To do this, it takes three to five days in the freeze dryer. By that time, most of the moisture in the food has been removed for a reason. You've removed enough moisture from that product that bacteria cannot grow. The freeze-dried dinners then vacuum seal inside a space-safe pouch, and a nozzle attaches allowing for rehydration in the shuttle's galley. What they do is insert this product into this rehydration station. Then they would dial up the appropriate amount of water, choose hot or cold, and push the button and the rehydration station automatically injects the temperature and quantity of water that they've selected. And there are no dining tables on the shuttle, so when they're not catching a bite of free-floating eggs, the astronauts eat off specially designed trays. The tray uses Velcro on the packages to restrain the, the food to the tray. It has magnets for the silverware. Uh, it has straps on the bottom. They can actually use these uh, Velcro straps to strap this tray around their leg. As far as beverages, there is always plenty of water on board the shuttle, which is actually a byproduct of the trip. Because the shuttle runs off of fuel cells, and the fuel cells combine hydrogen and oxygen to create electricity, and water is a waste product to that process. And while the technology today allows for a variety of eats and drinks, after months in the stars, the crew starts thinking fresh. Fresh food is, is very important to the crew members psychologically. We even had one crew member report dreaming about the fresh food prior to it showing up. So, you know, when you've been without fresh items for a long time, they take on a, a, a really big appeal. First space food? Well, that would be applesauce packaged in an aluminum tube eaten by John Glenn during the second manned Mercury space flight flown in April of 1962. Now, a lot of innovations that started at NASA are now found in our kitchens today. But here's the question, what does the future hold?